Good morning, good morning, federal employees. Great to have you this morning. Today, I am talking to those couples, those federal employee couples, where both spouses are federal employees. Because for you, there are three loopholes, three strategies that you guys can use specifically because you're both federal employees. That those where one spouse is a federal employee and the other isn't, it doesn't apply, right? So for you, there's some things, really cool things that you can do to get the most out of your benefits. So welcome. If you're new here, great to have you. My name is Dallin Hawes, I'm a financial planner who serves federal employees to help you guys retire comfortable and confident and get the most out of your benefits. So today was actually based on, today's episode is actually based on a question I received from a federal employee just like you, which you can submit your questions in the link below. So let me read the question, then I'll get to the answers. Number one, they, they, they ask, my wife, who's 43, and myself, who is 54, are both federal employees. She will retire at six months past her MRA, or minimum retirement age, with 30 years of service. I will retire at 62 with 28 years. Um, yeah, okay. I will retire at 62 with 28 years. Perfect. She says she will work six years after I retire and we are fully funded in our TSP, but we but we did start later than we should. At the time of retirement, each account should be ar- around one million. Our pay is equal. Any recommendations on survivor benefits, social security claiming, and FEHB strategies? Great, great question. So again, both of these, these spouses here are federal employees. And the question is, hey, because we're both federal employees, what's the best strategies for survivor benefits, social security? What about FEHB? And today we're going to talk about all of those. So let's start first with FEHB. So in this situation, one of the spouses um, is going to be retiring first and the other spouse is going to be retiring six years later. So whenever there's a delay where one spouse is a federal employee and of course the other spouse is a federal employee, um, is a federal employee, and you're not retiring at the exact same time, then this is a, a strategy you want to do almost every time. And that has to do with FEHB. Okay, so the whenever you're working, whenever you're working, you get a tax deduction for your FEHB. Meaning if you make 100 grand and you pay $5,000 in FEHB premiums, then you're taxed as if you only made 95,000, right? However, once you go into retirement, then that benefit goes away. So you don't get to get a tax deduction for that benefit anymore. So whenever there's a, a couple who are both are federal employees, if one's retired and one is working, well, we want the working spouse to cover the FEHB. They can have a family plan or a self plus one plan to cover the retired spouse where everything still works. They both have the same coverage, but depending on who c- carries it, will determine if they get that tax deduction. So that is one strategy right off the top that you want the working spouse to carry the health insurance basically in the vast majority of circumstances, okay? There are some exceptions to that, but most of the time, assuming you both wanna be on the same plan, right? Then you want to have the working spouse carry the insurance, okay? So that's number one. Number two, let's talk about survivor benefits. So if you're unfamiliar with survivor benefits, survivor benefits are a benefit you can elect at retirement. At retirement, on the retirement application, you have a choice. There's different boxes where you can decide if something happened to you as as a federal employee, do you want your spouse to be left with any of your pension, okay? If you don't elect a survivor benefit, then when you die, let's say you're getting $2,000 a month from your pension, that would go away and your spouse would not get any of it. But if you wanted your spouse to get a piece of it, you have to, basically your pension would be smaller while you're both alive, but it would allow your spouse to have something, okay? So there's a few options. Number one, um, if you take what they call the full survivor benefit, then basically it would reduce your pension by 10% while you're both alive. But if something happened to you, your spouse would get 50% of your pension, okay? So for example, your full pension would be reduced by 10% while you're both alive. But if something was to happen to you, um, your spouse would get 50%. The next option is you would get a reduction to your pension of 5%, so a smaller reduction, but your spouse would only get 25%. And then the last option is just zero, where it doesn't cost you anything, but your spouse doesn't get anything either, okay? So with that in mind, again, when you're married to a federal employee, they probably will have a pension of their own. So there is generally less need for survivor benefits. Now, let me mention one thing. 
One benefit that is tied to survivor benefits is health insurance. So for those folks where only one of you is a federal employee in, in your couple, right, in your, in your relationship, then if you don't elect a survivor benefit for your spouse, then if you died first, your spouse would not be able to keep on your health insurance. They wouldn't get a piece of your pension and they wouldn't be able to keep on your health insurance, okay? So generally, for the couples where one spouse is a federal employee and the other isn't, there genuinely is more of a need for survivor benefits for income, right? For To keep a piece of the pension, second for health insurance. When it comes to when both spouses are federal employees, there tends to be less need because first, both of you probably are gonna have a pension. Second, both of you may be eligible for FEHB on your own working record, okay? And if you're both eligible for FEHB moving into retirement, then you're not relying on your spouse's survivor benefits to make that happen. Now, still, sometimes it does make sense to elect survivor benefits if you do the math and say, hey, look, if something happened to my spouse or happened to me, the other person's not gonna have quite enough income to maintain the standard of living that we want. Sometimes it still does make sense to do survivor benefits, but generally, in my experience, there tends to be less need in those circumstances. So hopefully that makes sense. I've got other videos on survivor benefits if you want a more in-depth guide there, okay? Lastly, when it comes to Social Security, there are some great strategies when it comes to when both federal employees or when both spouses are federal employees to get the most out of Social Security. Now, this strategy is actually going to apply to many, many married couples even if they're not both federal employees. But let me talk through it. When it comes to trying to get the most out of Social Security, generally, there is a strategy where one spouse should start Social Security right away, early, at 62, let's say, if they're, if they're done working, and one spouse should delay, okay? That's generally the strategy that can make a ton of sense. Now, there's always exceptions to this, okay? Always exceptions. But for many, many couples, when one spouse takes it early and one spouse delays, they often get the most benefit over both of their lifetimes. And let me talk you through why. Number one, when one spouse takes it early, it's nice to have income early, right? To, to get money right away so you don't have to deplete things like your TSP so quickly. That's number one. Second, when one spouse delays, as you probably know, whenever you delay Social Security, your benefits get bigger. Now, if you're not familiar with how Social Security works, I've got other videos explaining how it works. I would go check those out first. Long story short, the longer you wait to start Social Security, the bigger the benefits are. Okay. Now, one question I always get asked, okay, what if one of us passes away? What happens to the Social Security benefits? And this is what happens. Let's say one of you took it at 62 and your benefit is $1,000 a month, okay? And let's say one of you waited till let's say 67 and your benefit is, is $2,000 a month. Well, if one of you passes away, the benefit that sticks around is always the bigger of both of your benefits, okay? So in this example, the $2,000 a month, okay? So long story short, for, by one of you taking it early, you get benefits right away. And by one of you delaying, you lock in a higher benefit bolt for both of your lifetimes, right? Because one of you dies, when one of you dies, well, that's the benefit that sticks around, right? So the odds of you getting tons of money out of the system that way is quite high, is quite high. So that is, again, check out my other videos on Social Security if you want more in-depth explanation on why this works the way that it does. But that generally speaking, that is a strategy that can make a ton of sense over time, okay? So those were the three thoughts, my, my three strategies slash loopholes for you as a couple who are both federal employees. Again, if there's any other questions for any of you, there's a link below to submit those. You may be featured in a future episode as well. So have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time.